Thanks for joining us for Denver 7 News at 6 tonight. I'm Shannon Ogg. I'm Ann Trujillo. Dangerous delays in responding to 911 calls and paramedics pressured to bypass qualified hospitals with critically injured patients. Now, Denver City leaders demand answers following eight months of reporting by Denver 7 Investigates. Our Chief Investigative Reporter, Tony Kovaleski, in with us tonight. City Council tonight promising to uh, dig deeper on this. Yeah, Shannon, and after today's meeting of the Public Safety Committee, several city leaders told me they now want more information, more answers. They want Denver Health to explain a fractured relationship with the fire department and failures to put patients first and to quickly respond to 911 calls. Do we have calls for service that come in and the unit is not assigned because the unit's not available yet? Denver city leaders. Make sure that we have better response times. Asking tough questions. There has been some concern about response times. Placing Denver Health on the hot seat. Critical questions about paramedic response times and a secret culture pressuring paramedics to bypass other level one trauma centers and returning critically injured patients only to Denver Health. We're not perfect. We have opportunities to improve. That has been a consistent talking point from leaders at Denver Health. We know we have challenges. We want to do better. We will do better. But ultimately, the question remains, will Denver Health make changes? A question shared exclusively with Denver 7 by several paramedics and Denver firefighters. What are these emails saying? The emails are saying what we all know is that there has been a long time problem with how long it takes an ambulance to arrive on scene. In recent months, Denver 7 has uncovered a paper trail of problems supported by passionate testimonials from emergency responders demanding accountability. Were you ever questioned about a decision to bring a level one trauma patient to the closest hospital instead of Denver Health? Yes, by my superiors and the medical direction team. Do you think Denver Health believes that they can't be stopped? Yes, they do. They, they play by their own rules. Those testimonials and the stacks of emails included in our reports were the foundation for questions by members of Denver City Council. I wasn't surprised um, that the wait times are as long and there seems to be some conflict between the paramedics and the Denver Fire Department, and it's a shame. If you had not been reporting on this, I'm not so sure we'd have all these people in the room today, so thank you which led us to the question, will Denver Health make changes? Dr. McVaney, Mr. Ruskevich, are you available for? A question we had from Medical Director Kevin McVaney and the hospital's chief paramedic. We've reported some critical things. Why are you walking away from our questions? We just want to hear your perspective. Are you going to change anything? Sounds like the answer is no. Dr. McVaney also avoided this key question. There are currently 70 Denver firefighters who are licensed and trained as paramedics, but Dr. McVaney prevents them from using their advanced life supporting skills when they respond to calls. The question here, why is Dr. McVaney preventing trained firefighters from saving lives? Council members and members of the city are now asking for a closer look at that contract between the city and Denver Health. Okay. Tony Kowalski tonight. Thank you, Tony. Nice work. Now, there are a couple other bills being debated at the state capitol today that focus on investigations Tony has uncovered. The first allows unannounced inspections of funeral homes and crematories during business hours. That bill did advance out of committee. The second increases requirements for releasing certain criminals on personal recognizance bonds. That bill died in committee. You can find